And we're back, folks. The competition has been fierce, but we've finally got our winner. Now for the grand finale, our champion faces the ultimate test. They'll need to prove that their compression skills are truly top-notch. The challenge? To see if their compressed header can be successfully decompressed back into a correct abstract header. Will their algorithm stand up to this crucial test? Can they maintain data integrity under pressure? This is the moment of truth that could make or break our winner's claim to the compression crown. Stay tuned as we witness this thrilling final challenge unfold. The decompressor isn't starting from scratch. It's armed with the exact same set of rules as our compressor. Here's where it gets exciting. By examining just the first few bits of the compressed data, our decompressor can identify the rule ID. And once it has that ID, it's got the key to unlock the entire rule. Our decompressor has cracked the code and uncovered the rule. The compression decompression actions are giving us valuable hints on how to mix it all together, the target value and the compression residues. We've got a co-app version field, and it's a tiny one, just two bits. The compression decompression action is not sent. We're going to snatch the value right out of the target value, and that's the same for type, token length, and code. Our next field is the message ID, and it's a real nail biter. The compression decompression action is flashing LSP. That's the least significant bits for our viewers at home. Now, our rule is telling us something crucial. The MSB is 8 bits long, and the LSB is 16 minus 8. Also 8 bits long. We're snatching the most significant bits straight from our target value, and for the remaining 8 bits, we're diving into our compression residue, fishing out those less significant bits. We've hit the token field. The compression decompression action is flashing value sets, which means we're diving straight into the compression residue. But wait, there's a twist. How many bits are we fishing for? They're darting to the field length for answers, and... Oh my, it's not just a number, folks. We've got a TKA function on our hands. This crafty TKL function is serving up the token length value on a silver platter. And what do you know? It's a whopping two bytes. That means our digital angler is casting their net for the next 16 bits in the compression residue. We've arrived at the URI path and buckle up, because the CDA is flashing a mapping sense. Let's take a peek at our target value, shall we? We've got two contenders duking it out here, battery and status. We only need one tiny bit to code this index. Our champion reaches into the compression residue and pulls out. It's a 1. This means our value is status, coming in at a hefty 48 bits long. We hit our next field, another URI path. The CDA is shouting, value sent at us. So we're diving straight into the field length in the rule. But wait a minute, what's this? Holy data streams, we've hit another function. This time, it's a var popping up. This sneaky little function means the length itself is hiding in our compression residue. Our champion springs into action, snatching the first four bits from the residue. And would you believe it? It's a four. That four is telling us we need to buckle up and read the next 32 bits to uncover our field value. And here we are, sprinting towards the finish line with our final field. We're looking at accept, the CDA's flashing not sent. Our champion doesn't need to dig through the compression residue this time. Instead, they're going to pluck the field value straight from the rule itself. And there you have it, data fans. We've just conquered the header in spectacular fashion. But hold on to your hard drives, because the show's not over yet. The burning question on everyone's mind, is there a payload lurking beyond the residue? If there were, we'd be in for a treat. Every 8-bit sequence forms that payload. Only three lonely bits are hanging around. No payload, they're just padding. And there you have it, folks. We've reached the thrilling conclusion of our data decoding adventure. Our champion has conquered every challenge, from mapping sent to value sent, navigating through functions and fields with the precision of a digital acrobat. We started with a compressed header, and through sheer skill and algorithmic prowess, we've unraveled it bit by bit. Our winner has proven their mastery of the compression arts, demonstrating that they can indeed turn that cryptic compressed data back into a pristine abstract header. As the bits settle and the excitement wins down, we bid you farewell. But don't touch that dial. We'll be back before you know it with another pulse-pounding episode of... Hold it right there. This whole competition is rigged, I tell you. You kicked me out in round one because I had three URI positions. That's a load of garbage. Let me break it down for you numbskulls. The field length has a variable length. Did that ever cross your minds? Huh? You can set the var value to zero, you dimwits. Zero. That means the field is empty. Empty as your heads, apparently.
I could have had a dozen Yuri positions if I wanted to, all empty, and it would have been perfectly valid. But no, you and your half-baked rules couldn't see past your own noses. This is an outrage. I demand a recount. You can't just toss out a brilliant mind like mine over some misunderstanding of basic variable length fields. Well, 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 it appears we've stumbled into quite the pickle here, haven't we? I must say, this is more embarrassing than the time I mixed up my binary and hexadecimal on live TV. However, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, there's a tiny wrinkle in your master plan. Each of those sneaky zero-length URI paths would still add four bits to the compression residue. It's like paying a small tax for each empty suitcase you bring on a trip. And here's the real kicker. Even if you'd made it past round one with this crafty strategy, I'm afraid rule 4 slash 8 would have been waiting to trip you up in round two. It's like escaping the jaws of one trap only to step right into another. So, while we appreciate your ingenuity, and believe me, we do the rules of the rules, but hey, keep that creative spirit alive. Who knows, maybe next season we'll see a whole new set of clever compression tricks. Until then, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming.